Welcome back to Home Video, this is James. Uh, look, just want to have a little bit of a rant today, uh, just about, you know, streaming services in general. Uh, you know, I'm not really one for streaming services, you all know that. Uh, you know, I, I go on about it a lot in the, in the show, you know, the Home Video show. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. Just go to the playlist on the channel and there's, there's episodes there. You know, you'll see me talking about the video store and things like that. But, you know, Netflix... I've got a bit of a beef with Netflix, and you know Becky. Becky has Netflix. Uh, I don't pay for it, you know, but I check it out every now and then just to see what's on it. I've got a few gripes. I mean, first off, the TV shows are very generic um, in the way that they are they are set up. Uh, they, you know, the documentaries, uh, just the the TV episodes of shows, they're all the same. They all go through the same formula. You know, nobody tries to do anything different. They just keep inside their little box and they just do carbon copy repeats of, you know, of shows and that because they know that it works. You know, they've got their blueprint, they've got their layouts and they just follow that formula. And it's really, I find it really stale. Um, you know, and I, I wanted to give you a few examples of, you know, what I thought about just in terms of browsing the actual content that's on Netflix. It's a lot different to browsing content being in a video store. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you some examples of that. So I'm, I'm running this off of an Xbox 360 as well. Uh, you know, it's kind of old school, but you know, that's how I like to do it here. So yeah, you go down the list and this is their list. This is it. Classic movies. Uh, and then it comes to the end and it's like, okay, that's it. Right. For instance, let's just say The Godfather, right? The blurb says Michael Corleone, the war hero youngest son of a powerful New York crime boss, joins the family business when his father is targeted for assassination. So it says cast Marlon Brando, El Pacino, James Caan, director Francis Ford Coppola. Now, so that's all That's all it gives you. You're supposed to go off that. Now when you look at the, the VHS or DVD or Blu-ray, right, you can see the, the, the cover. It's got a nice poster there. You look at the back and you read the blurb. It says Francis Ford Coppola's epic masterpiece features Oscar winner Marlon Brando as the patriarch of the Corleone family. Coppola paints a chilling portrait of a Sicilian family's rise and near fall from power in America and the passage of rights from father to son. He masterfully balances the story between family life and the ugly business of crime in which they are engaged. Based on Mario Puzo's best-selling novel, this graphic and brilliant film garnered 10 Academy Award nominations. All right, and then you look through the credits and you can see you've got Marlon Brando, El Pacino, James Caan, Robert Duvall, uh, Diane Keaton, you, you see that music is scored by Nino Rotta, you know, a great Italian uh, composer. So you can really look at that and you can make make a better assumption as to, you know, what the film might be like. It doesn't really give off that much of a vibe with the blurb on the, on the Netflix thing. You know, let's go for like another example. Dirty Dancing, right? While spending summer with her family in the mountains, 17-year-old Frances falls in love with the resort's free-spirited dance instructor. Uh, that, that's the blurb, okay, so you, yeah, it doesn't give you much to go on, you know, but you, you pick up the VHS tape, you see Patrick Swayze, Jennifer Grey, Dirty Dancing, and you've got the uh, little tagline, first dance, first love, the time of your life, you go to the back, dancing to the beats of their hearts, heartthrob Patrick Swayze, Jennifer Grey, and dancing sensation Cynthia Rhodes, star in this electrifying and sensual film, a vivid love story, Dirty Dancing is set to pounding rhythms and vibrant dance, guaranteed to be the time of your life. It's summer 1963. Baby, 17 years old and all idealistic innocence, is vacationing with her parents in the Catskills. While exploring the resort grounds late one evening, she is drawn to the staff quarters by stirring music. There she meets Johnny, Patrick Swayze, the hotel dance instructor. As experienced in life as Baby is naive, mesmerised by the sexy beats and uninhibited movements of Dirty Dancing, Baby soon becomes Johnny's prized pupil in dance and in love. And then it says soundtrack albums, Dirty Dancing and more Dirty Dancing out now. So from this I know that there's going to, it tells me that there's going to be a whole bunch of, you know, cool music in there. Uh, there's going to be a lot of dancing, a lot of kind of, there's going to be a romantic love story. It just gives you a whole lot more to go off of. By looking at the, the VHS I'd go, okay, yeah, I'll watch that. I'll give that a go, but you know, looking at it on Netflix, it doesn't give me much to go off of. I, I, I'd probably skip right past it to tell you the truth. You know, one more example, we'll go another one. Okay, Pulp Fiction. This stylized crime caper weaves together the stories featuring a hitman, his philosophical partner, and a washed up boxer. 
Now, I don't know if you've seen Pulp Fiction or not, but there's a lot more to the story than, than just that, right? So, once again, you pick up the VHS tape from the creator of True Romance and Reservoir Dogs. So, instantly, you know Tarantino. He's, uh, he's made these. These are some of the films he's made. And it's got a whole list of the cast. John Travolta, Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman, Harvey Keitel, Tim Roth, Amanda Plummer, Bing Rames, Eric Stoltz, Rosanna Arquette, Christopher Walken, Bruce Willis. You know, if that isn't enough to draw you in. Right, but then it says, Winner Best Picture 1994 Cannes Film Festival. R18+, plus, High Level Course Language, Medium Level Violence, Drug Use. And it's got Uma Thurman on, on the front with a gun and a cigarette in her hand. You know, it's like, if that doesn't draw you in, I don't know what, what will, you know. You know, you look at the poster, on the front there, it's just the poster with her. There's none of this going on to entice you in. You never have to see another movie after Pulp Fiction. Quentin Tarantino, the creator of the lethal thrillers True Romance and Reservoir Dogs, returns with his most scintillating piece yet, a pure adrenaline rush guaranteed to leave you gasping. Boasting a stellar cast including, oh yeah we went through all that, this Best Picture winner at the Cannes Film Festival and Academy Award winner for Best Original Screenplay is one exhilarating ride from start to finish. We dare you to step aboard. And then there's some quotes. Indisputably great. Ferocious fun. The action sizzles. Uh, tremendous fun. Stunning. Daring. Triumphant. New York Times. You won't know the facts until you see the fiction. And so then you read through the, you know, the, the credits at the bottom and you'll see that there's, uh, you know, you've got all the names on there. Uh, executive producer Dane DeVito, which is kind of weird. You know, I'm sold off of this. I'm, I'm sold off of the VHS tape and reading it, the front and the back. I would rent this out, or I'd watch it. it you know, I've seen it before, but if I hadn't seen it, I would watch this. Looking at this, it doesn't give me much to go off, and I, and I probably would skip past it. And that, that's that's really a, an issue that I have. Let's say you search just some other some movies that you think you might like to watch. So let's let's try, you know, the Truman Show. So you put in the Truman Show, and it's got the Truman Show there, but nothing comes up. You know, let's try Speed. Speed doesn't come up. You know, let's try, let's try, uh, let's try Die Hard. You know, uh, let's have a look. Die Hard. There's nothing on, nothing. There's no Die Hard. You know, let's try Bruce Willis. And we've got Tears of the Sun, Perfect Stranger, and Hudson Hawk. You know, his 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 classics. You know, there is these memorable films. Those ones, very memorable films by Bruce Willis. There. Don't worry about you know the Sixth Sense. Uh, don't worry about any of the diehards, you know, you don't need any of that. Oh, wait a minute, Cosmic Sin. Uh, I'd never heard of that. And, you know, with the Godfathers, they had Godfather number one, but they didn't have any of the sequels. No, so they've got Terminator Genesis. One film. One film with Michael Keaton. One, it's called Worth. I've never even heard of this. Michael Keaton stars as a lawyer appointed to compensate the families of September 11 victims in this poignant film based on Kenneth Feinberg's memoir. So, once again, it doesn't give me much to go on. Never heard of it. Maybe if I was to read you know a dvd of it read the blurb on the back and that maybe i might want to watch it nothing's making me want to to click on that no beetlejuice no batman multiplicity uh i mean what he's in dumbo well that's disney once again disney for taking everything obviously there's you know, no disney on here or anything okay they've got their own thing going and i'm not going into you know amazon or um tubi or apple stan you know, I'm just focusing this one on Netflix, just just to keep things simple. I mean, there are some there are some things on here where you're kind of like, yeah, I'll give that a go, maybe. But most of the time, you turn it off after five five ten minutes. You know, the selection is just quite quite dismal, really. Okay, let's put in Steven Spielberg. We'll see what comes up with Steven Spielberg. Uh, you know, he's made a bunch of movies. You know, he's been quite prolific in his career. Out of Steven Spielberg's filmography, there's five films there. Let's try. I mean, who else? Um, Let's go, let's go Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, I think he maybe had like 60 films, something like that. So absolutely nothing by Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, it's not even for a younger audience. It's, you know, everybody watches Netflix. Not everybody, but a varied age range watches Netflix. Five years old up until 100 years old, maybe. Why wouldn't they put Alfred Hitchcock on there? Um, and there's just absolutely no, no Alfred Hitchcock to be found. You know, I could go on about this. I could go on and on about it. I'm just trying to give you some examples of you know, classic movies, directors, that just aren't on here. Five films with Tom Hanks in it. They don't even have Forrest Gump. You know, let's go, let's go Johnny Depp, okay? Sure he's done a lot of stuff with Disney, but we'll just see. And we got, what, two films with Johnny Depp there, Black Mass and Corpse Bride. You know, how many films has Johnny Depp been in? Like, once again, he's been gone since the 80s. Very prolific filmography, and 
they got two films. It's sad. It's really sad. There are some good ones. Like, they've got the Harry Potters on here. No doubt they'll get taken down at some point. You're going to have to go somewhere else to watch your Harry Potters. Uh, and that's the other beef I have is that who knows how long they, they, they stay on for, for before they get taken off. Okay, they've got the Lord of the Rings on here. But, you know, where's the Hobbit trilogy? Well, actually, I guess that's fair enough. That kind of makes sense, actually, to tell you the truth. You know, I can understand that Netflix, some people like it, and they obviously don't care. They're happy to just scroll through it. But when you're after particular movies, uh, and you find that, you know, 80, 90% of them aren't on there, it's really frustrating because, you know, like I said, if I was paying for this service, uh, I, I really wouldn't benefit from it. Uh, it's, yeah, the selection for me is quite, quite poor and I just don't rate it. You know, I, I don't know whether it's me or whether that's just, you know, you know, I'm stuck in a different age, but look, you know, leave a comment, let me know. Let me know if, this, if you feel the same way about this as I do. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel about it. And I don't know if it's me. I turn Netflix on and I might find something once a month maybe. And apart from that, uh, I still really stick to the video store because there's a lot more titles to tell you the truth in the video store that I, that I um, enjoy than there are on Netflix. Just so I'd have a little bit of a rant guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. I know I say it every time, but uh, you know, if you can subscribe or just like or comment or anything, it really helps out the channel here. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you next time at the Home Video Channel.